Welcome to One on One with Expert Flyer. This is your host, Lisa Caslin. And today we're talking about the sometimes confusing, complex exercise of researching and booking your travel adventure. Uh, we came across a study uh, recently that uh, was commissioned by Iceland Air and Something like one out of five travelers say that they just feel overwhelmed, confused, and anxious about the whole process. So we decided to talk to a bunch of frequent flyers, frequent travelers to get their process, um, their proven process for, you know, not only getting good deals, but just sort of eliminating the anxiety associated uh, with, with this with this whole gig. So our guest today is uh, Torben Lund, and he is the editor-in-chief of Dive.in, which uh, is an online magazine that focuses on scuba diving, travel, and how divers can make a positive impact on the environment. Welcome to the show, Torben. Thank you, Lisa. Good to have you. So uh, I know Torben just came back from Thailand. He's back in Denmark. That's your, that's your native country, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a horrible place to be from when you're a diver because it's way too cold. So I, I do tend to travel a lot to, to go see uh, better places. We do have diving here, but it's not, not as good as, as other places in the world. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The grass is greener in your case, right? Yeah. <laughs> On the other yeah, side. Exactly. All right. So um, tell us about your process. So um, I guess, you know, once you have kind of decided where you want to go, what tools do you use uh, and sort of what order do you use them in to kind of make the decision? Okay, this is who I'm going to book with. This is when I'm going to go. Yeah, well, well, for, for the flights, um, at least the first thing, just going through the different search engines like Chivo Air, Expedia, and so on. Uh, use Momondo and Travel Scanner, uh, Sky Scanner as well. And just um, going through them and checking destinations and checking I'm quite flexible with when I travel, so I can often just take a broad spectrum of days and then try to focus in. I can usually get cheaper flights if I fly Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that compared to flying Friday or in the weekend. Of course, that depends on, on the destination, but but just trying, checking each of these destinations. I always use incognito searches where I actually don't mix up cookies and so on between the, the, the searches I do. I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of rumors that they affect the searches. I'm not sure if it actually does, but that's just, that's just the habit I've had of, of trying to find the cheapest one. Um, mm-hmm. so, so once I find these different flights um, that are available, let's say I find, find an airline that seems to have good prices, I then go and check their website to see if I can find it cheaper directly via them um, and sometimes it's possible sometimes it's uh, three four times the price that the, the flight search engines can find which is I find a bit wow. odd but I guess that yeah that's uh, usually I find that the discount airlines are cheaper booking directly via and the more established airlines um, in Denmark we have Scandinavian airlines that covers a large region and they always fly out from Copenhagen and they're quite expensive to book via directly um, and much cheaper to book it via an online partner um, and yeah the, the cheaper airlines are usually easier to book on directly they often have better deals and so on yeah but that's, that's interesting kind of, yeah. yeah okay no I was just going to say that's that's uh, that's interesting because you know we, we spoke to um three or four uh, other, you know, frequent travelers like yourself. And I think, you know, 100% of them also kind of end that search with going directly to, to the uh, airline's uh, website. But a lot of them said that they they were able to get uh, a better deal. And maybe, yeah, they, they, they their advice was to kind of book through the airline website uh, because they also felt that it, it alleviated issues so if something came up they they would be able to kind of rectify problems uh easier that way yeah yeah some (laughs) of the issues is also sometimes you end up with these third-party engines so if you you search via expedia or momondo they will actually send you to a second search engine where you you then then each time they get a bit of commission um yeah 
that just add, even though it's not adding up on, on the price tag itself, of course it's going to add up. They're going to take it, take the cost from something, um, and mm -hmm. then you end up at, at some, in my opinion, a bit sketchy search engine. And sometimes there will be issues if you book via them, and one of the connecting flights is cancelled. They won't cover you completely, like if you book via uh, the airline directly. That's at least if you read the terms quite thoroughly. There is usually issues with that they won't cover you, so they will just cover the cost of that flight, um, but they won't give you a new one. Um, and then if they cancel it a few days before and you have a connecting flight somewhere, the the price mm -hmm. for a new similar flight is going to be so much more expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I've never tried this on my own, but I can read in the terms that they won't give you that back, and I can just think of this scenario where they actually cancel last minute. It's going to be... yeah quite a lot more expensive than this booking via the airline directly. Yeah, that, that would that would be a scary situation. All right, yeah, so right. what about uh, <laughs> what about uh, accommodations? So when you when you or before you leave, how do you uh, you know make careful consideration about where you're gonna stay? Um, well I, I look at the area depending on what I'm gonna be doing, if it's just holiday or um, and I go to the city, I try to book outside the areas where I'm staying. I actually enjoy also the commute to, if you stay just a few 10, 20, 30 minutes outside the city, but close to a train line or, or some form of, of transportation, you actually get like a beautiful view of, of, of the area as well. That's just lovely. And the price just goes so much down compared to if you book downtown. So that's just mm -hmm. something I enjoy. In my opinion, I get more holiday from, from just the commute as well in the morning. If I'm going to see something in the city, I actually commute with the with the people living there. They're going to work. I'm going on a holiday, and it's just really nice mm -hmm. to see that kind of life as well compared to how we do commute here in Denmark. It, it's completely different to how people like just seeing them in their daily life routines and so on. It's for me that's a, a really good experience. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that kind of played into plays into the uh, flight booking too, right? Um, you you can be a little strategic in terms of saving a little bit of cash if you rather than flying into the main city, you fly into sort of you know a second tier airport, right? Um, that that also is a strategy that you use. Yeah, um, in two weeks' time, I'm going to Orlando, actually, for, for a conference. And, and flying back, I'm going to fly from Tampa Bay, which is two, three hours' drive from Orlando. And that driving that few hours uh, saves me, like, half the ticket price compared to flying back from Orlando. Um, and it, it took no time extra to find that, that extra connection, and it, it, was, it was quite simple to do that. And I've done that quite often just looking through so what 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 other options are there and you, nowadays you can do the the google uh, flight search uh, and momento has uh -huh. that as well uh, where you can just broaden the, the area and say well i'm just going to fly from in this hour of the day i'm going to fly to this area and you can just search and you can actually op often find cheaper flights that way um by just doing a kind of like a blank search where you don't have the, the final destination just an area and often as well if you do it the, the same way on the way back you can sometimes fly back and then here if, if i'm going back home to copenhagen i can also just fly to malmo uh, which sometimes is cheaper um, and then mm -hmm. take the train back to copenhagen um it, it, it adds a few hours extra on the travel but saves so much money it saves so much money okay yeah. well fair enough um uh, okay so the crucial question, I think, for a lot of people uh, is when is it the best time to, to to book, to pull the trigger, you know, because you always have this, you know, fear of missing out, right? Well, this sounds good, but if I, if I, if I pick this one and then tomorrow, you know, something is like 30% cheaper, I'm really going to, you know. So how do you know when it's the right time to, to, to pull the trigger on, on, on the deal? Oh yeah, that's um, that's a tough one actually, and, and I, I I sit with the same feeling every time. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna book now, or it's gonna be more expensive tomorrow, or <laughs> <laughs> do I do I risk that the price just uh, drops and I've bought for overpriced? Um, when I when I'm in good time, I usually look at the prices for a week or so and just 
uh, note down real quick. This this is the average. Um, sometimes you can remember it in your head. Sometimes you just note it down on a notepad, and and then just follow that price. So when I see it, it drops a bit compared to the original price. I can go like, well, now I actually saved up, and if I see it start rising slowly and just keeps on going, at some point I'm just like, now I just have to book because it doesn't look like it's dropping. Um, but often mm -hmm. when I do this, just over a span of a week, at some point, I usually just do it in the evening, just check out the prices. And then again in the morning, I try to do the same search. So you, you get a bit of time difference as well because uh, they, they do change prices up and down. All, all costs uh, are the same. Right, um, that's right. And, 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 then, and, I, and then I... And I, then I oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, so then I just, when I see that it's lower than the original price, I, I wrote down, I kind of see that, well, now and now I save money. Um, and then if you can follow that for a week, usually at some point you'll find a lower spot. And then I just book that and know that I might save more money, but I also might risk paying more money. And usually what I do afterwards is I stop looking at the prices. So I don't know if I actually missed out on anything. It's just, if I go back and look at sometimes you, you just, get real sad from seeing that you could have saved a lot of money but. <laughs> yeah it's hard it's again it's a gamble it's a gamble yeah yeah uh, okay so um oh i was just gonna ask you something else now like it just flew out of my head right. um in terms of you seem to to you know be an expert so i guess you know, for you, using a travel agent is not necessarily something that you feel the need to do. But I think, you know, some people do like that, you know, kind of, you know, concierge service where they're doing all the checking and the assumption is, well, they're they're booking thousands and thousands of, of trips, therefore they they probably get better pricing. I mean, understanding that, yes, they are, you know, charging a service fee, but, um, you know, all in all, it's probably a wash, but you don't feel necessarily that that's the case, or you do sometimes use a travel agent. Well, I've tried, and I could do it for for booking like holiday based travel, but but I think if if I go to just to destinations where I I have a thing to do, then then for me it doesn't make sense. I, and then again, mm -hmm. that could. That could be some 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 savings to do if you, you start contacting them and, and getting the rates and so on. Um, but I think a lot of the things they do as well is, is plan the whole trip. Uh, and for me, a lot of the, the travel experience is also doing the planning myself. I, I totally mm -hmm. understand the people that just want to want to buy a travel and, and then it's all taken care of and and people who know the destination and and want to go. Um, for me, the planning is is half the trip, the excitement of, of going somewhere and going reading about it and thinking, well, how do I get there? And yeah, I've yeah. Done a lot of travel so so I have kind of just been used to getting getting down my own. So so I kind of I don't have that big fear as once I'm at the destination it's gonna go okay. Usually it does. I haven't actually tried where it doesn't. So so that's um I, I can see why people book via agents but but for me that doesn't make that much sense now. Okay. All right. I, I, I just remembered what I wanted to ask you. And I, I know you, you mentioned it early on, earlier on uh, in, our, in our discussion, but you know, I think for some people it might be a little confusing. Uh, this notion of cookies and sort of disabling them and all that, when, when you are going through that, that you know, sort of final booking process where you're kind of writing down, okay, you know, this, this flight was for this and you're searching day and night, uh, are you are you disabling your cookies? Yes. Um, I, well, I try to, and sometimes uh, it slips up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I try to to remove them um, or use the incognito browser where you, I think you can just right click on the menu and then you actually open up a, like a private window. Um, uh -huh. It's just a, a gray browser, and you can type in, uh, let's say, Momondo Expedia. And then it's a clean record, kind of. And once you close it down, it, it deletes all the history. Um, yeah. That's quite easy for me. The, the only downside is sometimes you actually risk losing, like, if I found something really cool and I forget to note it down, I'm like, okay, so what was that airport's name again? And, and, when, when, you go, and when you go back in to do the search, the price can be so much higher. I'm like, no, that wasn't the name of it. And then you keep searching. So sometimes I do lose a lot of, of data for that because... 
when you did yeah. sit and doing all this research, you go through a lot of searches and yeah. But I, I guess that's part of the game. You win some, you lose some. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. All right. I just wanted to. I just wanted to kind of clarify clarify that tactic. Is there anything else that uh, you think travelers should know based on on your vast experience that maybe I didn't ask you? Well, we, we, we should. Talked about, uh, well, I, I, we talked about earlier about the um, how to book rooms and so on because I think that's that's quite kind of a big deal as well. For for me, I, I start with Airbnb and then I go through. The more um, established, like Hotels.com or Booking.com, and so on, um, to mm-hmm. see what I can find. And then, last, I, I do couchsurfing. Um, Airbnb for me is, is brilliant. I really like it. it it's cost efficient. Um, you can get really great deals there, um, mm-hmm. where you still get to, to stay nice places. Booking and 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 mm-hmm. the others are, um, are quite expensive, but sometimes they have really good deals, so you can actually get mm-hmm. something that. Are, if, if you have the time to wait for it. And then mm-hmm. couch surfing, when I go to destinations in peak season, sometimes the prices are just crazy and I, I look at it and say like, oh, that's, that's just too much. And couch mm-hmm. surfing has just given me so many great memories along the road. So it's, it's completely a different way of, of traveling and it's not for everyone because you're much more social, but that's a plus as well. You, you get to live in, with people and you, sometimes they'll show you around. Sometimes it's just... On the breakfast, you just talk about what's cool to see in the area, and they will give you a well, go here, go here, and you get that insider's knowledge of where to go, mm-hmm. kind of that you don't mm-hmm. read in the guidebooks and so on. And depending on the host, mm-hmm. some are really good at it, some don't even know their own cities. That's quite funny when you go, like, <laughs> oh, Where should I go? and they go, like, oh, I don't know. Um, but that, <laughs> I'm giving you my couch, well. dude. That's it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of, but but that's cool as well. Um, each each has sure. their own personality. Um, yeah, but, yeah, and and it, it's completely free. Cat surfing is free, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so, so it's yeah, the the people that are offering it are, are doing it because they want to meet people. So so that yeah, that's mm-hmm. just awesome. Uh, and and it, it is. I, I would say ninety nine percent of the time, it's just super awesome people that you meet. Um, really nice people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, listen, uh, I, I really appreciate your time and I know that, you know, you're, you're tired from your trip and you just got back home. So thank you so much for, uh, you're, taking you're a welcome. few minutes out <laughs> and we hope to talk to you. Okay. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Well, thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Toby.